Hey gang, show buddy plant. Today I show you how to make mellow mill. So let's go. So with fall brewing season coming around the corner, I thought I might as well get into brewing shape and uh, make something. And so today I want to make some mellow mill. Now, what is mellow mill? Mellow mill is mead with fruit in it. For those of you that may not know, what is mead? Mead is basically a honey wine or honey and water mixed together then fermented. Uh, one of my first videos I ever made was how to make mead. It was a pretty straightforward recipe. I think I even just used regular active bread yeast or whatever in it. Uh, I've made some other variations of mead. I made something called acerglin, which is maple syrup and honey fermented together. Um, using a kit, I made orange mead, but I just used the orange peel. We didn't use actual real fruit. And then I've also made something called sizer, that is apple cider, or you could use apple juice uh, for a minute with the honey, basically just a combination of hard apple cider and meat together. But again, I didn't use real fruit, I just used the juice. A mellow mill will use real fruit in it. Uh, there's some variations on that. I believe if I use grapes, it's called pyamit. And I believe for raspberry uh, mead, there's a specific name too. But uh, one thing great about mead is you can try so many different combinations. Now today, I'm going to make a mixed berry mead. Um, here, real quick, is what we need to make our mixed berry mead. Uh, first, you're going to need three pounds of honey. If you want to go crazy and try different, you know, jalapeno honey or wildflower honey or organic honey, what have you, feel free. I just use what's kind of convenient and uh, reasonably priced. Uh, I got some clover honey at uh, the store. I got three pounds. Next, I've got a berry medley or mixed berry blend. Uh, blackberry, blueberry, raspberry, and strawberry. These are one pound bags, so I got two one pound bags. Uh, next, you're going to need yeast. Technically, you could use baker's yeast, you know, dry active yeast. Uh, I would suggest poning up and get you a good wine yeast. Uh, ABV wise, we're going to get into the teens on this. Uh, also too, again, mead is kind of a wine, you know, it's a honey wine. You want, you know, a nice clean fermentation and uh, this wine yeast is built just for that. And if you have a homebrew supply store, anywhere near Amazon or whatever, and I'll leave links to some of this stuff on, uh, on the description down below. Get you some acid blend and some yeast nutrient. Between the honey and the berries, there's a lot of sugar there, so the yeast needs some help. Well, with that being said, let's make some Mellow Mel. All right, so our first step in making Mellow Mel naturally is to sanitize our uh, equipment. So I got sanitizer in uh, the fermenter that you saw earlier. We've got that uh, setting right now. So we go to our next step, which is Take one gallon of water and we're going to add our honey and boil the solution. We're doing this for two different reasons. Uh, first, sanitation purposes. But second, um, and this is something you should do uh, anytime you make any kind of mead, is you want to boil that honey off so we can get, eliminate any beeswax. It'll come out, once we get this to boil, it'll start to foam up and you want to skim off the foam. And that's the beeswax. And so we want to eliminate that. So, let me get this three gallons of honey into one gallon of water. We'll, we'll uh, boil it, skim off that beeswax, and then we'll come back for the next step. All right, so we boiled our uh, honey. We skimmed off uh, the wax. We wanted a ton of wax, a couple of spoonfuls, but enough where you could tell you probably should go through this process. Uh, so right now, I've got the honey and water solution in the sink cooling off. So we'll go to our next step. Uh, we're gonna take our fermenter, I'm using my two gallon Mr. Uh, beer fermenter. We're doing a one gallon batch, but because of the fruit also being in there, you're probably gonna need a two gallon fermenter to start off with. We'll eventually rack into a one gallon uh, secondary fermenter, but to start off with, we'll want a two gallon fermenter. Uh, so it's time to go ahead and add our fruit. And what I'm going to do is, and you don't have to do this, but this will make your life easier. I'm going to put the fruit in these uh, little muslin bags that we used to add hops in our beer. This is just gonna make our life easier for cleanup. Also too, when I siphon this off into another container, I have this handy spigot here. I don't want that to get clogged up. Um, if you just have a two gallon bucket of water, 
that's fine. You don't have to put them in the bags. This, like I said, is just uh, to make your life a little easier. Um, I've also, too, I've sent this fruit out a couple hours ago before we started the process. Uh, this was frozen. I bought it frozen. But you can use, you know, plain uh, unfrozen fruit, too, if you want to. But, again, that, that choice is up to you. Let's go ahead. All right, we got it all out. Like I said, this is just going to make handling a lot easier for you and clean up easier. All right. We'll go ahead and put in our container. And then we're going to use a potato masher. And we're going to slightly, I emphasize slightly, just gently mash the fruit. Uh, we kind of... We don't want to over mash it as we talked about with wine. There's, there's tannins in the skin of the fruit, so we don't want to mash too much. We don't want too much of those tannins. We do want a hint of tannins, and we also, too, just want to open the, the skin of the fruit so that honey, that mixture, can really penetrate into the fruit. So we'll just give it a light pressing, just enough to kind of stain the bag. All right, there. And then I'm going to do the same for the next bag. And we'll come back when our honey solution is, is through. We'll uh, go ahead and put it in our fermenter, and then we'll come back to add the yeast, yeast nutrient, and acid blend. All right, gang, so our uh, honey and water solution has cooled to the right temperature. We, pitched, uh, we poured it into our fermenter along with our fruit that we put in a bag, so we're at the right temperature to add our yeast. Uh, before we add our yeast, though, let's add a couple things. First, we're going to add one teaspoon of yeast nutrient. Why are we adding yeast nutrient? As I said earlier, we've got quite a bit of sugar in there between all the honey and the fruit. Uh, it's quite a bit of sugar. We want to give our yeast the best shot to do a good job and, and do all that heavy lifting. So we're going to add a teaspoon of our yeast nutrient. Next, we're going to add half a teaspoon of uh, acid blend. Remember that mead is a honey wine, so we're looking for the kind of balance that we have in a wine. There's a little acidity in wine, so we want to add that here with about a half a teaspoon of of our wine. Let me grab it. Uh, give it just a quick little stir because of those bags. Of fruit. Alrighty. And then last but not least, we're going to pitch in our wine yeast. Uh, like I, uh, I suggest you use a wine yeast. You could use, I guess technically you use beer yeast or again, uh, whatever, uh, you know, active dry yeast. This packet is a five uh, gram packet compared to the bigger packets are 11. So we're gonna use about half a packet. You want about two to three grams of yeast per gallon. It's kind of standard. Let me uh, pour this in. Yep, that's about right. And we are going to sit it and forget it. Now, where do we go from here? Uh, we're gonna let this sit in the primary fermentation for anywhere from about two weeks, maybe three weeks. Uh, after that, we'll rack off into a secondary uh, fermenter. Uh, we won't transfer the fruit over, so we'll just have it in a one-gallon fermenter. We'll let it sit in secondary for anywhere from two to three months, depending on how it clears up, uh, if we keep getting fermentation bubbles, what have you. After that point, we'll be ready to bottle, and you would let the bottle sit anywhere from six months to a year. Um, if you've seen any of my mead videos before, we've talked about meads, kind of a long game kind of thing. It's not something that's going to be ready to drink in a couple of weeks. It's a lot different than like the Will It Ferment series or some of the beers we've made of kits that are ready in about a month or something. This is going to take a while, but again, we're, we're making a wine. Wine sometimes, you know, could take a year or two to age properly, mellow, what have you. And so it's probably going to be next spring before we try this. Uh, maybe we'll do a vertical tasting where I try it at 6, 9, and 12 months, what have you. But I'll put it in separate bottles. But uh, real, real easy to do. You can use whatever kind of fruit you want. Um, you know, maybe change the, 
you know, acidity or, you know, you might want to play around with that as, you know, as far as acidic fruits, maybe less acid blend, what have you. But uh, mead is definitely a fun drink and a fun, uh, you know, something like uh, Mellow Mel is definitely gives you plenty of uh, room to experiment. Well, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please subscribe down below. Oh, real quick before I get into that, uh, ABV, before anybody asks. I'm not doing a gravity reading because it's going to be kind of hard to do right now because all that sugar in the fruit is kind of hard to project out. And if I took a little bit of that solution right now and did a hydrometer reading, I really couldn't tell how much sugar is in there because, again, it's not really accounting for the fruit. Most likely, uh, the recipes I read were most likely were going to be in the low teens at 13 to 14 range. Um, it could vary a little bit more. But uh, for those of you who want to know about ABV, that's... Uh, the scoop on that. Let's try this again. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please subscribe down below. Also, please like the video because it lets YouTube know we're putting out good content. If you need questions, comments, concerns, please leave them in the comment section or you can always contact me on the Twitter page. Till next time, bottoms up.